Yeah, I know you said it was just for six months, but come on. You don't really need it, come on. Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, whatever. So that was BMW, they're called, they want their blooming car back. Really love this 8 Series. It's awesome. Quite magical. It's the end of my long-term loan with this car, and they're going to be collecting it in a few days, so it's game over. Now, I'm going to be replacing it with another car, and more on that later, but in this video, I'm going to tell you what I really liked about this BMW M850i. So bright! What I didn't like, Ooh. and some things that I just thought were a bit pointless. I have never, ever used it at all. One of the main things I really love about this 8 Series is the way it looks. I mean, the side profile is just epic. The back end is beautiful. The front's actually good, but it's probably the weakest part. But overall, it's a stunning car and loads and loads of people turn their heads to look at it and gawp over it. Whenever I put pictures of it on my Instagram feed, which is Matt Watson Cars, by the way, cheeky plug there, <laughs> go check it out. It gets loads and loads of likes, more likes on average than any other car I post. However, a few smart asses go, oh yeah, nice Mustang, mate. But you ain't a car guy if you say that, because that'd be a bit like someone who's into art going, oh yeah, mate, your Renoir looks like a Monet. So anyone who says that can just piss off. When BMW first released the crystal gear knob, I actually criticised it. I sort of jumped on the conservative, boring motoring journalist bandwagon by going, oh my God, look at that. It's a bit chintzy. But actually, do you know what? I realise I'm a bit of a show off. I like a bit of bling. I like chintzy. I just wish it was even more chintzy because it could do with having the crystal round this bit, which is just cheapy plastic, which you do actually touch more than the actual top, but you love the look of it. And I've just had my fingernail hitting it because it's hard glass. Ow. The optional laser lights are absolutely fabulous. When it's nighttime, it's pretty much like you've got the ability to turn on the sun. Look at that, <laughs> it's so bright. And they do that thing where they can blank out part of their beams so they don't dazzle other drivers, though they don't seem to work for cameramen. Sorry. The all-round parking cameras are absolutely brilliant. And I love the way they do this thing where not only does it show you how close you are to the car, it then changes the view to a top down so you can get super, super close <laughs> it's awesome. One of the main things I really love about this 8 Series. Got a 4.4 litre twin turbo V8 with 530 horsepower. Yeah, that sounds better than the diesel. These electric sports seats are just super comfy and I love the lumbar support that you get. So it really does support your lower back. But the best bit, is the fact that you can actually alter how much grip you get from the side bolsters yet again electrically so it can hug you nice and tight. Oh yeah, this car clearly loves me. It's weird. Sorry. Perhaps one of my favourite features in this car is the upgraded cruise control system which comes as part of the technology pack which is £2,800. So it does that thing where it'll keep you a safe distance from the car in front using radar, and it'll even work in stop-start traffic, such as I'm experiencing now, most annoyingly, on the M25 in London. Also, it does that thing where it steers to keep you in lane, and I don't just use it on the motorway, even though it's awesome on the motorway, and it helps take the strain out of longer journeys. I even use it in town just as an extra pair of eyes. It's dead good. Now, you shouldn't take your hands off the steering wheel for too long because it'll sense that you've done that and get cross and the system will flash some amber lights and then they'll go red and then the system will disengage and slow you down in lane. So look, it's doing it now. It's not liking that at all. But what you can do is just rest your knee there and it gives it some resistance to the steering wheel. So it thinks you've got your hands on it. Now, I do not recommend you do that at all. You know, CarWow doesn't endorse it. BMW doesn't endorse it. God doesn't endorse it, the devil doesn't endorse it, Richard Dawkins doesn't endorse it either. You know, I've just gone totally rogue, but I need to show you how it actually operates, otherwise you won't believe me. And this segment would be like that stupid Nissan advert when the woman's going, ooh, look, the car's steering itself. The steering wheel, Neo, it's moving on its own. So it's, yeah, it's not you? It is, it's not me. And the kids are like, wow, but really, you'd be like, what are you talking about, mum? You just look like you're driving normally, you silly cow. I was quite surprised how practical this car's boot is. The boot opening itself is actually wide enough to accommodate a microwave, which was handy when I bought a new one around Easter time. Also, I took this car on holiday and filled it full of ski gear. I actually went away with Mr. Henry Catchpole from Carfection. 
it's quite magical. Considering this is a big, powerful V8, the economy isn't dreadful. So on a relaxing cruise at the motorway to Yorkshire, I did actually manage to average 29 miles per gallon. However, over the 10,000 miles I've done in this car, I've actually done 22.8 miles per gallon. Now I actually had a diesel beforehand, the 840D, and that averaged 35.2 miles per gallon. So that means that if I'd have had the diesel instead of this car and done those 10,000 miles, when I do the mass based on fuel prices, blah, 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 the difference in cost over those 10,000 miles would be about 830 pounds. Would anyone who can afford a car like that care? No. What's more important though is the size of the tank. It's actually quite large. At that economy rate, you can do about 330 miles on a full tank, which is all right. I love how you can choose that when you turn the heated seats on, it also heats the armrests both here on the centre console and on the doors. This is a long ass car, so it's a good job it has rear wheel steering as standard. So the back wheels turn in the opposite direction to the front, a bit like on a forklift truck, to tighten the turning circle so you can actually manoeuvre it quite easily in town. I really like this car's colour combination. So the exterior paint is this really dark blue. In fact, it's so dark that for the first month I thought it was actually black. Then there's the inside. The red and black really works well. So it does sort of make you feel like you're sat inside a woman's what's it. I really like the way that you can turn off the car's driving aids and safety systems just by pressing this button here. Now you're probably not going to use that as a normal owner of this car but for me as a motoring journalist when I have to film getting really close to the bumper of another car I don't want the car suddenly auto braking because it just ruins the shot. I really like this car's headlining it's super soft and lovely to touch in fact you know how when you're stressed like petting an animal can just calm you down if ever I'm stuck in a jam in this car and I really do do this I, I stroke the headlining and it just makes me feel a bit more peaceful kind of wish I hadn't just disclosed that when I first got this car, I thought I would never use the gesture controls, that they'd be a complete gimmick. Why are you going to use that stuff when you can just change the volume here or skip tracks easy on the steering wheel? Actually, I don't use that at all. I do use the gesture control. It's just somehow easy. I don't know why. You can just reach across and you turn up the volume like that. And it's super quick and faster than pressing a button on the wheel. And it's strangely satisfying when you skip tracks by going like that or like that to go back. It's almost like a sport because you don't always nail it, but when you do, you get that ping sound. It's almost like hitting the perfect forehand tennis shot or something like that. And then when someone calls you, you can just reject their call by going, oh, be gone. Now I want to talk you through some of the things that have annoyed me about this car. Things I don't like, things that have done my head in, like this big, stupid, smart key. It's not that smart, actually. The screen on it's really laggy and you can't actually do that much with it. And it's super, super heavy and bulky. So when you're carrying it in your pocket, it's as though you've got a hernia. Now, what you can do is get an app for your Android phone so you can use the phone's NFC technology to open the car instead. I haven't got around to doing that. I suppose I would if it was my own car, but if you've got an Apple phone, that thing won't work. Also, the car does this thing where you can automatically make it lock and unlock the doors when you walk towards it or walk away from it, but it doesn't always work, so you'll end up walking away from the car thinking, oh, I've got this, I've got this, it's all set up, it should auto lock, it should auto lock. Has it auto locked? I don't know, has it auto? Has it? No, you should have done it by now, and then you just have to go back and uh, lock it properly. Ah, it's temperamental. While well, a Mercedes Benz has 64 different ambient lighting colours, this has only six different colours, and not one of them goes with this two-tone interior. I've settled on the blue because it's the best of a bad bunch. Now, I know BMW is trying to be all modern by having a USB-C connection there, but really, you never get to use it because most of us may have USB-C connectors, but on the other end of the cable, it's the normal USB. And there's only one of those in this car. And when you plug it in and you're using the wireless charging pad, it's dead hard then to get your phone out past it. It's like they haven't really thought things through. The design of the seat base extender means that if you lend someone your car and they eat in it, then that gets filled with crumbs. However, if you're a glass is half full kind of person, you can see that as look. Handy bit of free food. Yeah. This black shiny plastic trim really scratches easily. So I was cleaning out the car with a vacuum cleaner and I fitted one of those brush attachments and it was a soft brush, or so I thought, but when I ran it gently across here, left all these marks, it's just horrible. Oh. I'm not the biggest fan of this car's digital driver's display. So the graphics are all a bit dark and miserable and it doesn't show that much information. Seems a little bit like a missed opportunity. 
The satellite navigation system is about as good as it gets in cars, but it's nowhere near as good as Google Maps or Waze. And the annoying thing is, is that it can be taking you on a route and you can see like a little shortcut and it doesn't tell you to take it. Then you do take it and it's trying to U-turn your back to go onto the main road again and eventually it relents and then it cuts its time by a significant amount as if to go, oh actually sorry, you were right. Now that wouldn't bother me so much if I could connect my phone's maps to this car, but I can't because it doesn't have Android Auto. Finally, we come to the features on this car which I just haven't used. And the first is the park assist, so that will automatically park the car in a bay for you, either parallel or bay parking. But really, it's just quicker and easier to do it yourself. Also, you'll be able to fit this car into a smaller gap than it can fit itself into. The other one is the reversing assistant. What this does is play your steering inputs for the past 50 meters in reverse. According to the BMW marketing men, that's really handy if you're trying to get out of a tight underground car park. It's all very impressive. I have never, ever used it at all. Actually, I tell a lie, I have used it to show people what the car can do. But that is the only time, just to show off. Never again. Pointless. If I'm totally honest, I've hardly used any of the features of the iDrive system. So the way you can like move the tiles around and customize it, never bothered doing that. Just like I haven't bothered on my phone either. Another thing I haven't done is I like, explored the menus that deeply. I just use the basic functions as most people probably do. There's things like apps and stuff on it and weather and internet connectivity and Wi-Fi hotspot, but no, not used those at all and I doubt I ever would. The last thing I haven't used on this car, obviously being a BMW, are the turn signals. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm sorry this car is going as well because it's been great to live with. Really fun, super cool, very luxurious, but them's the brakes. Actually, my phone's vibrating. Hello? Yeah, it's Matt. Oh, really? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I'd love one, I'd love one. That was another manufacturer, so I'm gonna get a new long-term car. Can you guess what it is? Click up there on the pop-out banner in the top right corner of the screen to cast your vote. And I'll have a new video out soon revealing exactly what that car is. Hello, 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 hello. Piss off. <laughs> so you can actually manoeuvre it quite easily in town. It's quite magical. <laughs>